Hey guys, this is Alex here from Ward at Work. Today we're going to be doing a full review of the Samsung Gativ SE for Verizon Wireless. In our previous first impressions and unboxings, we took a look around the device and certain bits of the software. But now we're going to take a full dive into those aspects of the device and see whether or not it is a good guy for Verizon Wireless. <music> Focusing on the hardware, we're going to start with the front here. And as you can see, you have a front facing camera. You have this obnoxious Verizon logo at the top. In usage, it really frustrates you. It impedes on the aesthetic design of the device. But as a consumer, you guys just need to know it is up there and there's no way of getting rid of it. Uh, below that, you have the 5.0 uh, inch or 5 inch display that is 1080p resolution. Uh, this is very similar to the Samsung Galaxy S4, guys. This device is almost an exact replica of that device. It just has new insides, a new software, and a different look aesthetically. But it's almost the same device. Uh, below that screen, what you have is the home button for the Windows key. Now, this is very different than other uh, OEMs like Nokia and HTC in the past, where they usually have capacitive buttons. Samsung has gone the route of using what they do on their Android devices and give you a capacitive search button, home button, and capacitive back button. Now that might be a welcome addition for some people who really do love that, that feel of the home button. And as you can see here, it is raised quite a bit, so you definitely know where it's at at all times. Now looking on the side of the screen, you can see the bezels are extremely small. Uh, this the display pretty much encompasses the entirety of the front of the the device is very pleasing to use. It is AMOLED technology and Samsung does make great screens so there's no worry in terms of the quality of the display. Now moving at the bottom here you have a micro USB port. On the side here you have the Samsung power button on the right hand side. At the top you have an IR blaster which is uh, coincides with their watch on app if you have other devices that usually have the same thing on their tablets and Samsung Galaxy S uh, series phones it is also on the Windows Phone device. You do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with a mic as well. I think that is for noise cancellation as the bottom mic is for calls. On the side here, you do have the volume button. That is pretty much, that's it. And the rest of the device is streamlined. Uh, in my usage, the device is a joy to use in the hand. It fits perfectly. This is where the five inch display might be the sweet spot uh, for some users. I feel as if this is the perfect size for a practical device that is high tiered with specs but isn't overly oversized uh, like the Galaxy Notes of the world but in my in general usage this this phone is a joy to use uh, on a day to day basis moving along the back you have a 13 megapixel camera with a single LED flash again that's very Samsung Galaxy S4 like as well you have the Samsung logo and you have 4G LTE now at the bottom they have this really cool looking almost Iron Man like design with the speaker grill at the bottom and this brush aluminum look uh, but it is only a look this is still Samsung do guys don't forget that this is plastic this is polycarbonate plastic as you can see here when I peel it off you get that 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 coveted Samsung back cover that's durable flimsy and all the above uh, in my usage at first I was pretty frustrated with that I thought this device had a premium feel or a metal aspect to it but it does not but the look itself grows on you uh, I've come to really enjoy the way this device looks uh, in general and if it, it seems to go perfect uh, with the Windows phone operating system this is just a good looking device that works well this is probably one of the best smartphones on the market that won't be known uh, and that's just that's pretty much how I feel about this device at the end of this review this is a this is a really great device uh, but we're actually going to remove that back cover again and look in the innards of the device we're actually going to pull out the the battery here and show you that it is packing a 2600 milliamp hour battery pack. Now this this battery and this operating system with these specs, this device is a is a horse. This thing lasts for days and general usage, uh, not using heavy media and texting here and there. You get about two days out of this device with that battery. On standby time, it goes more toward four to five days, which is awesome. I mean, Windows Phone is really great at optimizing hardware or software. Uh, and then the, the added beefiness of the battery just helps to go along with that. As you can see here, you have a micro SD card slot. Now this does not take 128, it takes 64 and below. So that is kind of a shortcoming, but someone looking to get this device probably won't need 128 gigabytes of storage anyway. And it does have about 16 gigabytes of storage on board. And that's pretty much it for the inside of the device. So we're going to actually 
fast forward the video while I'll turn on the device and take a look at the software. Okay guys, now before we do a software rundown, we're actually going to take a look at the size comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S5 and the Samsung Ativ SE. So when we stack them against each other like that, see how that looks. As you can see, they're very similar. I might edge it out with the Ativ being a little bit chunkier. I don't know the exact measurements offhand, but we're just going to eye it. But they're very similar as you guys can see. Then we're actually going to go like this. And the Samsung Galaxy S5 is a bit bigger, but that makes sense as the display on the TV SC is 5 inches and is 5.1 on the Samsung Galaxy S5. So we're actually going to move that aside here. And we're actually going to compare it to the HTC One M8 Harman Kardon Edition. So let's actually turn that screen off. And we're just going to do a size up. Turn it that way. Now the One M8 is a bit taller, but I mean, that's pretty much well known. It is a very big device uh, in terms of length. But in terms of thickness, as you guys can see, also very similar. I'm going to say that T might be a bit chunkier, but not by much. And we're just going to do a size up like so. And as you can see from the front, you see how much bigger it really is. But that's just a general size up of the device. It's pretty much on par with most of the flagship devices on the market today. And it just adds credence to the fact that this device in hand is, is better than most in the market today. Okay guys, now we're actually going to take a look at the software on the device. As you guys can see here on my wallpaper, I have Kakashi from Naruto. I don't know if you guys are fans out there, but this is a pretty badass wallpaper. Uh, now in terms of the lock screen, it's pretty much stock how you guys usually see them on Windows phone devices. But I've done something for you guys and pretty much for myself. I've installed the Windows Developer Preview 8.1 on this device. Uh, in doing so, I did it because you have to utilize the power of the hardware on this device as it is running a Snapdragon 800 processor, have 2 gigabytes of RAM, 1080p display, 13 megapixel camera. Just with those specs, you kind of want to get the most updated version of Windows, and I wanted to showcase that here on the Teeth SE. So we're actually going to scroll up, and as you can see, you have the new tile format that is allowed with the 8.1 update. Now, speeds with this device are amazing. The Snapdragon 800 just pretty much steams through. Windows Phone operating system. As you guys can see here, I do have the notification bar. Now this is going to be a rundown of 8.1. We do have videos specific for that. But in general, on, on the, the usage of 8.1 on the device, it is stellar. Now, the reason that I'm it's kind of upsetting about the update and the preview on Samsung devices is that they weren't pretty much tailored or ready for the update just yet. So Cortana is not an aspect of the device with the installed beta version which is very frustrating as you can see here I'm actually going to press the start button and you get the standard Bing interface and I'm going to tell you guys just from the jump using Cortana and coming back to Bing it is a horrific experience Cortana definitely enhances Windows Phone operating system and it's my hope that hopefully an update is given to Samsung users uh, that want Cortana in the future to use that with this device but overall speeds are great Colors are amazing. Uh, the colors are very vibrant with the AMOLED display, as you guys would already assume so. And battery life kind of works well with the update as well. And going to multitasking, as you can see here, nothing really slows down. Everything works pretty well. I'm just giving a sampling of how it looks with the update. We're actually going to go down to the scroll bar and go to settings. And now, looking in the settings section, you have the standard settings that you would with any Windows Phone 8.1 device. Now you do have Pacific sections like Sound Alive, which Samsung adds to their to their uh, repertoire of applications on here. Very similar to how Nokia has their Pacific applications for their devices. But overall, it is pretty much the same uh, as as it is universally with other Windows Phone devices as well. There's nothing really new here to showcase that Samsung has added specifically for the update. So in terms of software, you're getting the best of what. Microsoft is offering as well as a speed bump in terms of optimization of the hardware. Hey guys, this is Lex here from Word at Work and Carmelo just had a shot of going to the bathroom, but uh, this is my dog, his name's Carmelo, um, Golden Retriever, and we're just using a video sample of the Samsung Ativ SE and uh, Verizon Wireless. Now this is 1080p HD video uh, output. Uh, in terms of uh, stabilization of the camera, it isn't too bad, it doesn't have optical uh, image stabilization on board but it is rather smooth 
Um, colors are, are really great. Uh, Samsung always does a great job in, in producing colors. And in contrast with his color compared to the grass, it's definitely a looker. Just to get a couple more images, see you get close up, see if we can get some more detail on the grass. Right, so there you go. We got a little focus going on, but overall the video is okay. Hey guys, now looking in terms of standalone applications that are made for the Samsung device, Ative SE, we're going to look at such things like Ative Beam, which is very similar to the Galaxy S3 campaign that pretty much put Samsung on the map. Uh, the pretty much their bump feature that they use with the NFC, where you could tap Galaxy devices together to share information. The same is here as well. Now, you can actually do this with Android devices, which is very cool, and it's using the NFC technology. So, uh, iPhones are kind of out of the picture, but all other Android devices are pretty much uh, go with that feature. So going along, you do have app folders. Now, Nokia does have this as well, but Samsung has their own version of it, so that's good to see as well. Battery saver, data sense, these are all ones that come with the device. Scrolling more, let's see if we have some specific Samsung applications down here. And you have Samsung Link. Now, I do have a Samsung HD uh, TV, so this kind of works well. You're able to share content with Samsung devices, whether it be a tablet or a TV, as I mentioned before. So you can actually remotely control your TV, certain aspects of it, and transfer those photos and videos uh, via wireless uh, technology. So that's also always good to have. So this is pretty much Samsung showcasing, you know, their version of their specific apps that Nokia pretty much leads the category in, in terms of window phone devices. And you don't have too much bloatware on the device. There is Verizon uh, Navigator here, but as you can see, I can hold that and uninstall it, which I will do because I have never used it. And that's the beauty about one of those phone devices. You're able to uninstall all apps. There is no hindrance besides some of the specific ones that are on the device. But overall, the Samsung Ative SE is a great buy, guys. Uh, I've enjoyed this device. Uh, battery life, speed, software, everything just comes together with this device. Um, and it is on Verizon, so you're getting great speeds with 4G LTE. But in general, you guys have to look at this device on Verizon as a Windows Phone uh, counterpart to purchase uh, if you're looking for a good Windows Phone devices as I do have Nokia as well so if you're looking to purchase a Samsung device and it's not going to be Android uh, look towards a Samsung Ative SE. Be sure to like, share, favorite the video, comment in the sections below if you guys haven't and be sure to subscribe to Board at Work if you haven't already and remember to always enjoy your entertainment. Thanks guys.